Hello students, myself Mohamed Asim, Assistant Professor in Mathematics, Art Science Commerce College, Badnapur. In previous lecture, we have seen about Laplace transform, in which we have seen the definition of Laplace transform, and then we have seen about the Laplace transform of some basic function such as 1, then t raised to n, e raised to kt, sin at, cos at. Such type of function we have already seen. And after that we have seen about the properties of Laplace transform in which we have studied about linearity property, first shifting property, first scale property, change of scale property and uh, multiplication by t raised to n and so many other uh, properties we have seen before. Now, Today we are going to start with examples of Laplace transform. Examples on Laplace transform in which we are going to start with We have seen that the last transform of 1 is equal to 1 minus at 6 is by 0 the last transform of t is to n that is n vectorial s raised to n plus 1 or we can say that of n upon s raised to n plus 1 then the last transform of e raised to at which is equal to 1 upon s minus a then the last transform of we have seen that about e raised to at f of t and we have seen that f of 1 minus s minus a then the last transform of We have seen such type of theorems in previous lectures. Now, in this lecture, we will study with uh, some example and which are as follows. We have calculated the Laplace transform of sin at, especially sin at, and which is equal to a upon s square plus a square. And Laplace transform of cos at which is equals to s, s square plus a square. Now, 
we are going to find the class transform of hyperbolic sine a and Laplace transform of cos a. Correct. Now we have to calculate the Laplace transform of sine a t and Laplace transform of hyperbolic cos a. Since we know that, since we know that sine x is equal to x minus x cube 3 factorial plus x raised to 5 5 factorial x raised to 7 7 factorial correct and if we put
in left hand side we will get e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon 2 which is equals to hyperbolic sign that is sin x. So hyperbolic sin x can be written in the form of e raised to x minus e raised to minus x upon 2. So to find the Laplace transform of sin Laplace transform of sin hyperbolic AP and since sin hyperbolic AP is equal to e raised to AP minus e raised to minus AP upon in previous lecture we have seen that the trigonometric value of sin AB sin AB is e raised to AB minus plus IB minus IB e to I. Correct. Whenever we talk about hyperbolic sin AB, we will write it as e raised to AB minus e raised to minus AB upon 2i. Now using this result we can find the plus number of sine hyperbolic AP is equal to the plus number of e raised to AP minus e raised to minus e raised to minus e one upon two taking outside we will find that Laplace transform of AP minus Laplace transform of minus A and E is equal to one upon S minus A minus one upon S plus A. Now after applying cross multiplication, you will get one upon two s plus a minus s plus a upon s square minus a square plus s minus a square s a cancel. We will get 1 upon 2, 2a s square minus a square. We will get cancel and we will get that is Laplace transform of sin hyperbolic AP is equal to a upon s square minus a square. We will get Laplace transform of sin hyperbolic AT is equal to A upon S square minus A square. Now, we will try to find Laplace transform of cos AT. And we know that hyperbolic cos AT is equal to cos a t is equal to e raised to a t plus e raised to minus a t upon 2. Now we are going to find the Laplace transform of cos a t. Laplace transform of is equal to the plus transform of e raised to a t plus e raised to minus a t upon 2 and taking one upon two outside the plus transform of e raised to a t plus the plus transform of e raised to minus a t now since we know that 
Laplace transform of e raised to eighty is equal to one upon s minus a. Similarly, plus the derivative one upon s plus a. Now.
Correct. Now it becomes S minus A raised to N plus 1. After calculating, first, after using first shifting theorem, we can write the plus one form of t raised to n e raised to a t as follows n factorial upon s minus a raised to n plus one. Now we will see one more example about e raised to b t cos a t. Let us transform of E is to B D. Let us transform of Let us transform of E is to B D cos A. <coughs> now again, we can use cos if it there to solve this example. Since we know that cos is to be there. becomes f of s minus a. Correct? For that we have to calculate the Laplace transform of f of t first. So let f of t is equal to cos a t and Laplace transform of f of t means Laplace transform of cos a t becomes S upon S square plus A square and hence we can use the class transform of E raised to B T cos A T is equal to S minus B upon S minus B square plus A square and it is the required result. Correct. In this example, we have used first shifting property. Remember one thing: whenever you will get an exponential function in multiplication of other function, we have to, to solve that example with the help of first shifting thing. If we take e raised to a, a t as f of t and another function as in multiplication, then we come across some complicated uh, steps to solve that example. So always remember whenever e raised to a t is in multiplication with other function, we have to calculate. Laplace transform of that function first and then applying first shifting, uh, first shifting theorem we can easily solve that example by changing s by s minus a. Correct? So today it is enough. In next lecture we will try to solve some more example. Till then, thank you. Bye.